Hello everybody. So today we are going to be talking about the newly released Prusa Slicer 2.4. And I know Prusa already did their own video on this today, but there was a ton of information in that video. And there are a few things that I thought stood out that I think have been getting overlooked. Now I've been playing with Prusa Slicer uh, 2.4 since the alpha version came out. And it's been very interesting. And one of the things that has been overlooked in this version, and I think even in 2.3, is the parts gallery or the shapes gallery. And that's something that they showed off in this video that I think a lot of people aren't realizing the power of such a gallery. Now, if you're like me, um, or any of the other makers out there, you might have a bunch of different types of filament. I, for one, subscribe to a filament subscription box. The one that I get is the Box Mountain uh, Maker Box. And inside, you have all kinds of different filament that you can actually get. I get the everything box, and they mean everything. It's eight little sample coils of filament. Now, there's always going to be four samples of PLA and then four samples of something else. It could be PDG, it could be nylon, could be flexible. And I like to test them out for various things. I like to test out what temperatures they print at, their cooling properties, their overhang, bridging, stringing properties, and so on. Now, if you're also like me, your files that you've downloaded from, you know, Prusa printers or elsewhere, um, they just kind of sit in this giant folder and they're named all kinds of different things. Sometimes they got different numbers and it's a pain to go back and forth. And every time you put in a new filament to test, you got to reload that part back up. Uh, sure, you could save it as a project file, but then you got to go in and you got to change what filament it is, the temperatures, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So one thing that I like to do is use this parts gallery to save my test prints. So we're going to go over to Prusa Slicer and take a look at what that looks like. All right, here we are in Prusa Slicer uh, 2.4.0. This is the release. This isn't the release candidate. This isn't the beta. This is actually the release. So I'm gonna go here and uh, we're just gonna go to about Prusa Slicer. You can see it is the latest version. Now, one of the things you can do is go over here to window and go to shape gallery. You can see that we have a couple of different shapes here. You have um, I don't know why you need a box in a cylinder when you can right click and add it, but it's there for access, I guess. The real power comes when you go to add. You can add, and I have over here in test files, so for instance, um, I want to do this Marvin keychain. So now you can see that I've put Marvin keychain in here, and then I just click add to bed, and poof, there it is. Now the beautiful thing is, if I get rid of it, I can just go back over to the shape gallery, Bring that over, double click it, and it is back on the bed. I don't have to remember where I've saved it. I don't have to remember where it's, you know, stored at, anything like that. Now, here's a crazy cool concept. Uh, say, you know, you do a lot of stringing tests. You can come over here, you can add it to the bed. Okay, that's great. But when you go remove it, it's like, okay, now I gotta go find that file again. Back to the shape gallery, you can just go in there, add the stringing test, and then boom, you're good. You can add multiple parts from the shape gallery. So if I wanted to, I can add them both, arrange it, get it sliced up, and boom, there it is. It is ready to go. I can now add a little uh, guy there to remember what color it is. I can test that as well for stringing. Here's an even cooler test. If you want to test different colors and see how they react, see if they bleed together, um, I downloaded this um, quick models from uh, Bruce Printers, and you just go in here and hold down the control button and select those models and hit add to bed. It'll ask if I wanted it for multi material. I click yes, this out of the way, and boom, there we go. I guess I should move that back on the plate, but there you go. Now you're testing five different colors and now it's permanently in there. So whenever I want to use it, I can just go back in there and add them. Um, I don't think you can um, move these around, and I'm not sure why yet, but it would be nice if we could pick an order in which they um, are selectable. That way I could just go, you know, 
select these guys and be done. Um, so let's try that actually. Let's just go ahead and delete all these. Let's go ahead back into add and go here and add all of these at once. Okay, so it added those, that's great. Go back in, we'll add in the Marvin keychain. Nope, so I think it, it, it has to do something either with the name or something of that nature. But it is kind of nice that you can just come in here, select the models, add them to the bed, and it knows what to do with them. It's pretty cool actually. Okay, so I did figure it out. It does have to do with how you name it. So see how these are named one through five? That's fine. Uh, so I had to go back and actually rename the little Marvin guy with a six starting at the front, and now it puts him in order. So now I can just go here and then um, select that, hold down shift, can add all those to the bed, or I can come back, go to the shapes gallery again, bring in the little Marvin keychain guy, and I am set and ready to go. So, yeah, um, this is just a, a quick little tutorial showing you the power of the Shapes Gallery. Just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what you can do with it if you're printing things over and over and over again. Um, this is an easy, quick access way to do it. One more thing I will show you that it is pretty cool that you can do here. Um, so if I wanted to add a shape, say a box, let's go ahead and scale that 200%. 200% not 20. Um, one of the cool things is um, just adding like a stamp to something. So for instance if I wanted to I can just right click over here and then you can uh, add part and then load that part and then I have my logo that I can drop in here and I can move it wherever I want. So if I go up here and say I'm going to move it, uh, put it on top, we're going to go ahead and Bed it like right there. Then I'm going to change that extruder to number two. I'm going to slice it up. Boom, there we go. I just stamped my logo on a part just by adding it in there, which is super cool. Now, you can't do that by using the Shapes Gallery because it actually just adds it as um, an actual uh, just STL and it's not going to add it as part or a modifier. But it is pretty cool. Um, I can actually go over here. And I can change the type so instead of being a part I can just say it's a negative volume and then when I slice it again um, now I'm gonna have a cutout there so if I didn't want to use an MMU I can just cut it out and I basically stamped my logo into the part which again super cool super powerful little tricks that you can do right into Prusa slicer that they've built in definitely go give it a try check it out uh, leave a thought in the comments if you have some other tricks that you maybe want me to explore or things that you would like to see, um, and let's explore together. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.